Hi, this is Miss Logan. Today I will be discussing 1D kinematics. We're going to go over basics like position, distance, displacement, speed, and velocity. As a reminder that you need to watch this video and take notes, you can rewind, fast forward, and pause at any time. When you are done with this video and the notes, you need to complete the form and click Done on Google Classroom. Before we, we begin any problem that has to do with motion, forces, anything like that, we always need to set up our coordinate system. Okay, We need to define an origin, so where we started at, and a positive direction. Okay, So before you start a problem, it's always a good idea to make a compass to show us where positive and negative are. Now this may seem like a step that's unneeded, but as we get farther into AP Physics this year, our coordinate systems are really going to change. So for instance, in this problem down here, you can see the origin is marked right here, and then this is the positive direction. Okay, so our first definition is distance. So distance is the total length that we traveled. So let's say that we start at our house, and then we go to the grocery store and back, okay? So I went 4.3 miles plus 4.3 miles. So I went a total of 8.6 miles. So this is the length I traveled, or I also like to say the path. Our second definition we're going to talk about is displacement. So displacement is the change in position from start to end. So I think this is best if we just look at an example. So if we drive from my house to the grocery store, and I'm going to put a little start here so that we remember where we started, and then we go all the way back to our friend's house, so we end here, our displacement is the total distance between the start and the finish. So our displacement is only 2.1 miles. However, what is my distance? Well, I went 4.3 to the grocery store, and then I went 4.3 again, and then I finally went 2.1, okay? So I actually went for a distance of 10.7 miles. All right, so speed and velocity are going to be our main things that we're going to be talking about in this unit. So the average speed is the total distance traveled divided by the time the trip took. So this is our equation. So average speed is distance divided by elapsed time. So let's look at the situation down here. So this car went four miles at 30 miles per hour and then another four miles at 50 miles per hour. So is my average speed 40 miles per hour? or is it more or less? It's actually going to be 40 miles per hour. Why? I went the same diff distance each time, so my average is going to be 40 miles per hour. Now, let's say I went more distance at 50 miles per hour, my average speed is going to go up. So speed and velocity are really different. We often use them interchangeably, but their definitions in physics are vastly different. So my average velocity is my displacement divided by time. So we're going to have some situations where displacement and distance are the same, other situations where they are different. So as a reminder, if you return to the starting point, your average velocity is zero. So let's say that I start here, and I'm the sprinter. I sprint all the way to 50 meters and then I walk back. My start and my end are at the same place. So our equations that we're gonna be using are important, but what's most important for us to really dive deep into is our distance versus time graphs, okay? Now there are two different ways that we can show this. This first graph here, we see it kinda of looks like a number line. So right here is my origin and then this is my positive direction, and then here is my negative direction, okay? I like to think of this almost like we're walking on a track, um, and we are going around the track, 
and we are starting at our origin. So in this situation, I'm starting at one meter and I'm going positive towards four meters, okay? But right here, I do something and I actually turn around. Right here, I'm going past my starting point, okay? So we are getting negative right now. We're going past our origin. So we're sometimes going to see graphs like this. However, we're most commonly going to see our position versus time graph, which can often be confusing. Now it's important before we start looking at these graphs that we look at this line right here. This is the origin, okay? And when we go past this, we're going past our origin or our starting point. So this is the same exact graph, the same exact data, excuse me, as over here, okay? So I'm starting at one, I'm increasing my position, and then I'm going back through my initial position, okay? So my velocity is actually becoming negative right here because I am going through my origin or I'm going in the negative direction. So let's look at this example right here. So I like to start these always by looking at my origin so we don't get confused. So in this situation, I have my position and then I have my time right here. So at first I'm moving away from the origin Right here, I have no slope. So when I have no slope, there is no movement. And if I have no movement, there is zero velocity, okay? Then I'm turning back around and I'm walking through my origin in the negative direction or walking back and then I'm moving back towards my origin, okay? This is typically what position versus time graphs are gonna look like, and we'll explore this a little bit more in class. So our last vocabulary word is instantaneous velocity. This is something that's a little bit more difficult to actually calculate, okay? So we're evaluating the average velocity over a very short amount of time. As time becomes smaller and smaller, we're gonna have our instantaneous velocity. So this is like a speedometer on a car. It's telling us the velocity or speed at that exact second. So how we figure out instantaneous velocity is kind of cool. This is just a regular position versus time graph and this blue line right here is representing the motion of some object. So what's happening is that over time, this object is increasing speed pretty rapidly over a short amount of time it's going a pretty large distance, and then it's starting to kind of taper out, so we're slowing down here. Now, how do we figure out this instantaneous velocity? Well, we're going to look at the tangent of this curve. So graphically, that is how we're going to get our instantaneous velocity. All right, so as a reminder, make sure you take notes and complete the Google form and then click done on Google Classroom. We'll go over this in class and do a ton of practice problems and labs.